Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation, keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. Welcome everyone to Too Good to Be True. Thank you for taking the time to listen. The subject for today's show is Edgar Mitchell and parapsychology. Before we start getting into details, let's just briefly talk about psychic insight and how we apply it. We choose a subject and research it, and based on that research, we determine what we think needs to be explained by creating a series of questions. Then Justina provides psychic insight to answer those questions. The psychic insight is narrated towards the end of the show. Accepting the psychic insight is a question of individual belief. Now let's go through the disclaimers. Here are the disclaimers. Neither of us claim to have any expertise on any subjects that we discuss. We relate information we find through research and the psychic insight. We are always delighted to hear from the listeners. The show only lasts an hour. We don't have the time to present exhaustive research on any topic. This means that there will be information that we miss. We want to provide a basis for the psychic insight. We don't care if a theory turns out too good to be true, as the show name suggests. We are only interested in finding out more of the truth about topics. Spirit can only relate insight that is appropriate for our time in history. Free will cannot be affected. Only comments that are appropriate for our time can be given through the psychic insight. Much of the subject matter in shows may have already been covered many times in other media. We want to look into subjects in a new, different way and be thought-provoking. We are not so good with pronouncing names, we apologize, and neither of us have any particular knowledge of the Apollo space program, moon landings, parapsychology, or paranormal studies. If we have misstated anything, we apologize. Edgar Mitchell was a famous astronaut. He was a lunar module pilot for the Apollo 14 mission and was the sixth astronaut to walk on the moon. But he was also involved with Apollo 13 as part of the mission operations team that helped with the successful return. Even though he had a technological background, he became interested in parapsychology. Why don't you provide a definition for parapsychology, as it may mean different things to different people? The Cambridge Dictionary has the following definition, quote, the study of mental abilities, such as knowing the future or telepathy, that seem to go against or be outside the known laws of nature and science. Unquote. Besides training to be an astronaut, what were Mitchell's qualifications? According to Wikipedia, Mitchell had three college degrees. Quote, he graduated from Artesia High School in 1948, 
Mitchell received a BS degree in industrial management from the Carnegie Institute of Technology, now Carnegie Mellon University in 1952. The same year, he entered the US Navy and, and completed basic training at San Diego Recruit Depot. While on active duty in the Navy, he earned a second bachelor's degree in aeronautics from the US Navy Naval Postgraduate School in 1961, and a Doctor of Science degree in aeronautics and astronautics from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT, in 1964, unquote. Artesia is a small city in southeastern New Mexico, although Mitchell was born in Hereford, Texas. MIT is one of the world's most highly rated universities. Mitchell's doctor, doctorate dissertation was to design a mission to Mars. How did Dr. Mitchell get involved with NASA? Mitchell was selected as part of NASA's Aeronaut Group 5, sorry, Astronaut Group 5, as described by Wikipedia. Quote, NASA's Astronaut Group 5 was a group of 19 astronauts selected by NASA in April 1966. Of the six lunar module pilots who walked on the moon, three came from Group 5. The group as a whole is roughly split between the half that flew up to the moon, nine in all, and a half who flew Skylab and Space Shuttle and, and Space Shuttle, providing the Corps of Shuttle Commanders early in that program. Unquote. The Space Shuttle program, which involved Earth orbit reusable space vehicles, ran from 1972 to 2011. Can you say more about his time at NASA? Again, from Wikipedia, quote, he was assigned to support to the support crew for Apollo 9 then was designated as lunar backup lunar module pilot for Apollo 10. This placed him rotation for Apollo 13, but his crew were switched to Apollo 14 so that Commander Alan Shepard had been granted by, medical, by a medical problem since the Gemini program could train longer. During the Apollo 13 crisis, Mitchell was part of the Apollo 13 mission operations team and was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Richard M. Nixon in 1970. He worked in a, an, an Apollo simulator to help bring the crew back. One issue he worked on was how to fly, meaning control the attitude of the lunar module with an inert Apollo Command service module attached to it. Usually it was the other way around, but the service module was damaged during the mission. He then went to serve as lunar module pilot on Apollo 14, landing with Shepard aboard the Lunar Module Antares on February the 5th, 1971, in the hilly upland of Fra Mauro Highland, re, Highlands region of the Moon. They stayed on the Moon for 33 hours, deployed and activated lunar surface scientific equipment and experiments, and collected almost 100 pounds of lunar samples re, for return to Earth." Unquote. Wikipedia makes it sound easy for Apollo 14 versus Apollo 13. It wasn't, of course, as the Vice website explains, quote, on his way out to the moon, there simply wasn't time for Edgar Mitchell to complete the, contemplate the universe. The schedule was jam-packed and the pressure was on. Mitchell had been part of the team that worked feverishly to bring Apollo 13 back home safely, he was piloting Apollo 14's lunar module to the surface of the moon when he encountered two failures, one after the next. Quick thinking saved the mission. Mitchell had to manually punch in 80 lines of code into an onboard computer with only minutes to spare. And while Mitchell and crewmate Alan Shepard would have more time than anyone else to amble across the lunar surface, nine hours, the schedule remained tight and there was important work to do in the name of politics, a flag to raise, but also of science, craters to find, rocks to collect, and for the first time, scientific experiments to set up, unquote. But the return journey was more significant for Mitchell. Why was that? History tells us that Apollo 14 was successful, with all three astronauts making it home safely. Again from the Vice website, quote, On the way back, however, things were more relaxed, quieter. Mitchell took time to look out the window and was transfixed by the sight of the largest thing he'd ever seen, largest thing he'd ever known floating in the dark. The moment would change his life, giving him a glimpse of a deeper, hidden nature. All of us had the experience, let's call it the overview effect of the big picture effect of seeing Earth in its setting, rather than as the end-all and be-all of all living systems, Mitchell told me in 2012. 
my own experience was a very powerful one. On the way back after my work was done from looking at Earth from space, you could come up with the question, who are we? How do we get here? And where is all this going? And that's an ancient, ancient question that humans have asked for, for a long time. My experience was to realize that perhaps our science is wrong and at, at answering these questions, perhaps our religious cosmologies are archaic and flawed. And given that now we are an extraterrestrial civilization ourselves, we need to re-ask these questions and do a lot more work to find the answers, unquote. Cosmology is the study of the science of the origin and development of the universe. Mitchell seemed to be already turned it, tuned into the paranormal. He conducted private ESP experiments during the mission. Can you say more about these private experiments? The 2001-2002 winter edition of Cabinet Magazine includes an interview with Mitchell. The interview, interviewer asked how the experiments came about. Quote, Edgar Mitchell, it happened about three weeks before the mission. I met some research physicists, Doctors Boyle and Maxey, who were very interested in the field and suggested to me that it would be an ideal time to do the experiment. They gathered and coordinated everything. I was too busy for that. In addition to the two of them, there was a reputable psychic that they knew and Olaf Jonsson, who was a well-known public psychic in Chicago. We practiced a few times with the principals before flight. As far as we know, it doesn't take any expertise at all, expert relaxation and focus, and the ability of individuals to intuitively resonate with someone else, unquote. How did Mitchell run the experiment? Here's more from the Cabinet Magazine interview. Quote, my experiment involved four transmission sessions during rest periods, programmed into the flight. The well-known experiment in the laboratory was to use cards with the five Zener symbols, but the actual cards are important. It was easier for me to use random number tables that carry the physical cards instead. All I did was to generate four tables of 25 random numbers, just using the numbers one to five. Then I random, randomly assigned a Zener symbol for each number. For each transmission, I would then check the particular table of random numbers and think about the corresponding symbol for 15 seconds. Each transmission took about 16, six minutes. I did this when I was ready to go to sleep at night. We had sleeping bag hammocks that we would put underneath the two the couches. Two of us would go to sleep in a hammock while the other one would be on watch. I would do the experiment before going into my sleeping bag." Unquote. Zener cards which are used to test ESP are a deck of 25 with five cards of each symbol. The five symbols include a circle, a plus sign, three vertical wavy lines, a square and a five pointed star. Was the experiment successful? Apparently so and unique in being across space. The results were published in the Journal of Parapsychology in 1971. Well, to continue after the short break, and you're listening to Too Good to Be True with Justina Marsh and Pete Marsh on the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. It's hard to listen to the news without realizing we're living in volatile, unprecedented times. Yet never has there been such an opportunity to transform the human condition. As old structures fail, where can we find the guidance to co-create a better way? Find Your Path Home is an ever-evolving, leading-edge information, education, and healing resource center designed to support and guide you on your path to unity and enlightenment. Based on sound principles employed by shaman worldwide, we provide techniques that can support you through the current transitions, offering online shamanic classes, 
international long-distance shamanic healing sessions, complimentary Mission Evolution radio episodes and Stairway to Heaven TV vignettes, seminars, retreats, and much more. All of this can be found on findyourpathhome.com. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens and they kept repeating to me over and over again, simultv.com, simultv.com. What's simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. SIMULTV.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about SIMULTV.com. SIMULTV.com. Path Home Shamanic Art School proudly presents the Gathering of Shaman 2019 Fall Retreat, Manifestation Salon. Join me, Certified Shamanic Instructor Gwilda Wiecka, in the magnificent Colorado Mountains this November 2nd and 3rd for a life-changing event. Participate in unique teachings and ceremonies that will put the power and magic of shamanic manifestation into your hands. Sit in circle with like-minded individuals, sharing group energy and the power it generates. Classes will be held in a facility next to the beautiful, majestic Arkansas River, further empowering the experience. Space is limited, so reserve your spot today. For more information, visit findyourpathhome.com or email touchin at findyourpathhome.com. to Too Good to be True. And before the break, we were discussing the published results in the journal Parapsychology. So let's continue. How did Mitchell continue with his interest in parapsychology? He first had to finish his career with NASA after his ESP experience became public. Wikipedia explains his next steps. Quote, he retired from NASA and the U.S. Navy in October of 1972. Immediately thereafter, he founded Edgar D. Mitchell Associates of Monterey, California, a commercial organization promoting ecologically pure products and services designed to alleviate planetary problems. After moving to Atherton, California, California, he became founding chairman of the Institute of Noetic Sciences, IONS, in Palo Alto, California, in 1973, the purpose of consciousness research and other related phenomena. Science and religion have lived on opposite sides of the street now for hundreds of years, Mitchell said towards the end of his life. So here we are in the 21st century trying to put two faces of reality, the existence face and the intelligence or consciousness face into the same understanding. Body and mind, physicality and consciousness belong to the same side of reality, unquote. Decades later, more than ever, mankind needs ecologically pure products and services designed to help the planet. Is the Institute of Noetic Sciences still in operation? The Institute of Noetic Sciences Orions is currently operating with noetic being defined by the organization as follows. Quote, noetic from the gro- from the gro- sorry, from the Greek noesis, no etikos meaning inner wisdom, direct knowing, intuition, or implicit understanding, unquote. They also provide a definition for noetic sciences, quote, noetic sciences, a multidisciplinary field of study that brings objective scientific tools and techniques together with subjective inner knowing to study the nature of reality, unquote. Successfully applying science to subjective inner knowing might be a bigger challenge than walking on the moon. The IONS website includes a quote from Nikola Tesla that we included in a previous episode. Quote, the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in the previous centuries of its, of its existence. Unquote. What is the IONS organization investigating? 
The following is, is on the IONS website, quote, Noetic sciences are explorations into the nature and potentials of consciousness using multiple ways of knowing, including intuition, feeling, reason, and the senses. Noetic sciences explore the inner cosmos of the mind, consciousness, soul, spirit, and how it relates to the outer cosmos, cosmos of the physical world. That's a broad definition, including as it does research into the mind-body interaction, consciousness, the paranormal, often called Psy Research, alternative and complementary healing, subtle energy information, imprinting as into water and other substances, the human body field and other aspects of nature and human biology that are routinely dismissed by conventional science, unquote. The Science of the Lost Symbol website makes the same quote from the IONS website. The Lost Symbol is a 2009 novel by author Dan Brown, famous for the Da Vinci Code. A noetic scientist is included as a character in the book, The Lost Symbol. Consciousness is a word that is used a lot, but what does it mean in terms of noetic science? I think that the word awareness is interchangeable. The following is, on, is, is the ions, everything is connected hypothesis. Quote, by embodying an awareness of this interconnection, we can tap into information and energy not limited by space and time and profoundly amplify transformation, innovation and well-being. We have been testing this hypothesis through various experiments and peer-reviewed papers for 45 years. We are pioneers of mindfulness research in the 1980s and continue to expand the field on the scientific understanding of integrative and complementary health and wellness practices." Unquote. I have to ask, what is mindfulness? Details are provided by the Greater Good magazine published by the University of California, Berkeley. Quote, mindfulness means maintaining a moment by moment awareness of our thoughts, feelings, bodily sensations and surrounding environment through a gentle nurturing lens. Mindfulness also involves acceptance, meaning that we pay attention to our thoughts and feelings without judging them, without believing, for instance, that there's a right or wrong way to think or feel in a given moment. When we practice mindfulness, our thoughts tune into what we're sensing in the present moment rather than rehashing the past or imagining the future, unquote. Mindfulness appears to be squarely in the mainstream. Maybe in the future, the hypothesis that everything is interconnected will be more widely accepted. But what did Edgar Mitchell do after founding the Institute of Noetic Sciences? He moved to Florida and passed away on February the 4th, 2016, aged 85. What else can you say about his interaction with parapsychology or the paranormal? Wikipedia includes Mitchell's claim of being helped by a remote healer later in life. Quote, Mitchell claimed that a teenage remote healer living in Vancouver and using the pseudonym Adam Dream Healer helped him heal kidney cancer from a distance. Mitchell said that while he never had a biopsy, I had a sonogram and MRI that was consistent with renal carcinoma. Adam worked distantly on Mitchell from December 2003 until June 2004 when the irregularity was gone and we haven't seen it since, unquote. Is Adam Dream Healer still practicing as a remote healer? Apparently not. He is an ND or naturopathic doctor with that qualification requiring training that includes that normal for a medical doctor or MD, but is more extensive. What did Mitchell have to say about UFOs and extraterrestrials? His comments are intriguing. The, f the following is from Wikipedia. Quote, Mitchell probably expressed his opinions that he was 90% sure that many of the thousands of unidentified flying objects or UFOs recorded since the 1940s belong to visitors from other planets. Dateline NBC conducted an interview with Mitchell on April the 19th, 1996, during which he discussed meeting with officials from three countries who claimed to have had personal encounters with extraterrestrials. He offered his opinion that the evidence for such alien contact was very strong and classified by governments who were covering up visitations and the existence of alien beings' bodies in places such as Roswell, New Mexico. He further claimed that UFOs have provided sonic engineering secrets that were helpful to the U.S. government. 
Mitchell's book, The Way of the Explorer, discusses his journey into mysticism and space. In 2004, he told the St. Petersburg Times that a cabal of insiders in the U.S. government were studying recovered alien bodies and that this group had stopped briefing U.S. presidents after John, Kennedy, John F. Kennedy. He said, we all know that UFOs are real and the question is where they come from, unquote. If his comments are correct, presidents wouldn't know the facts. Kennedy apparently inquired about UFOs, addressing a memo to a government agent, apparently only days before being assassinated. Did Mitchell say any more on controversial subjects? Here's more from Wikipedia. In 2015, Mitchell made what Huffington Post UK characterised as the astonishing claim that it was aliens, not diplomacy, that prevented the Cold War from descending into the Third World War. In a Daily Mirror interview, Mitchell said, White Sands was a testing ground for atomic weapons, and that's what the extraterrestrials were interested in. They wanted to know about our military capabilities. My own experience talking to people has made it clear the ETs have been attempting to keep us from going to war and help create peace on Earth, unquote. But I think we have to mention his meeting up with Yuri Geller. Who is Yuri Geller? He is an, an Israeli-British illusionist, television personality, and self-proclaimed psychic. So what happened with Mitchell and Geller? The Cabinet magazine issue we quoted from earlier asked the, questions how Mitchell, asked the question how Mitchell met Geller. Quote, the gentleman who was originally doing work with him, Dr. Andrija Purarchik, called me and asked me if I was interested in meeting him. Geller had been investigated many times all over the world by scientists and, and magicians who are trying to be, debunk him. You have to work with these people on their terms. You have to find out what their shtick is, so to speak. And you set up your science, set up a science protocol that works within the parameters that they are comfortable with. We did not set up a c controlled experiment to do teleportation, for example. We didn't really know how to do that, unquote. What was the teleportation experiment? Mitchell's answer from the same interview was as follows. Quote, that was really more of a joke because I was annoyed with him. We were trying to work, get work done in the laboratory and it wasn't working. And Geller said that he was, in, he was good with teleportation. So I said, OK, teleport back the camera I left on the moon. He didn't get a camera back, but he'd get, he did get two lost type-ins of mine back. Piece of one of them showed up in Geller's mouth as he was eating ice cream, to the surprise of all of us. The other type in and the rest of the first one then showed up in the laboratory. One piece turned up right in front of Dr. Putsov when he was in a group when he was with a group of people, and the other dropped into the floor dropped to the floor between Dr. Putsov and me when we were in the laboratory alone. Unquote. We'll have to continue after the break with the questions and psychic insight. And you're listening to Too Good to Be True with Justina Marsh and P. Marsh on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. a skeptic or a believer join me rob mcconnell as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the exxon radio tv show on xzbn and the exxon tv channel on simul tv since 1990 the exxon radio tv show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard together we'll investigate ufos aliens ghosts bigfoot psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, 
haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, The X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com, or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, always remember Exxon Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. Welcome back to Too Good to Be True. And before the break, we are going through the questions and psychic insight about Edgar Mitchell in parapsychology. Dad, can you please continue with the questions? Do many of us or just a few of us believe that body and mind, physicality and consciousness belong to the same side of reality? That is a belief that only some people believe in. However, again, it goes into this moment where people have these questions. Again, going back to who are we? Where do we come from? What are we living in? What is, what is actually reality? So with finding out answers to those questions, that is when people have to come together with the different belief systems, where overall that is not the overall thought process, which is actually a positive thing. Is a better life on earth with more personal freedom for many more of us, depending on it being proven that body, mind, physicality and consciousness belong to the same side of reality? That could be stated, yes. Are there some among us for selfish reasons who want the belief to continue that body and mind, physicality and consciousness belong to different sides of reality? Yes, that is 100% true, where some people want them again to be in tiny boxes where the concepts are not one and the ultimate goal of a lot of humans are to get to this oneness. Is successfully applying science to subjective inner knowing a bigger challenge than walking on the moon? especially in terms of making progress in just a few years. Yes, humans are programmed and their brains are programmed through evolution to think in this most more scientific, here is what is right in front of me way. However, there is the primal instincts where ancient humans had this knowing and followed this knowing. But again, you're going again against societal concepts where it has been programmed since childhood and programmed after generation after generation. So you're going up many different, many different factors where in a way it would be easier to just shut off someone's brain and go with the knowing within them, which obviously is not possible. But in a way it would be easier and walking on the moon was quite simple compared to that. We have asked this question before. Why did Nikola Tesla state, the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence? This basically overall, overall goes back to bringing all these concepts together and bringing this oneness together. So every single person has this responsibility where if they want to move the earth forward, it is going to take some very hard concepts and some training in the way of themselves where they can advance, but they need to advance with all the concepts, all the pieces of the puzzle, not just a few. Are most humans in good health able to become mindful in maintaining a moment-by-moment -moment awareness of our thoughts, feeling bodies, bodily sensations and surrounding environment? by not being overreactive and over overwhelmed. Yes, almost anyone can do that. So it is just as the thoughts come in, being aware of the thoughts. 
which seems like an easy concept, but in practice, it is quite complicated, since again, society, especially Western society, is tied to go and do the next thing instead of sit and think. Is mindfulness, for example, mindful taking time to pause and breathe when the phone rings instead of rushing to answer it? Is that a useful approach to means of managing stress in our lives? Yes. How did mindfulness become accepted in the mainstream? Is it because there are obvious health benefits? Yes, especially when it comes to mental health benefits. So being mindful can help with many different conditions where this mindfulness puts a person in the present, where even in previous shows we mentioned, a very good way to live is to live in the present, not living in the past or worrying about the future. From December 2003 until June 2004, was Mitchell helped by a remote healer, Adam Dream Healer? That could be said. With probably many healers to choose from, how did Mitchell decide on Adam Dream Healer as his remote healer? The knowing feeling. Without a, without a biopsy, did Mitchell actually contract cancer or did he have a condition that was consistent with the sonogram and MR results? but was it actually cancer? It was consistent, but it was not actually cancer. Did Mitchell have any conventional treatment in addition to remote healing? Yes. Did the condition go away as a result of the remote healing? The remote healing helped, yes, but again, it is always advised to contact medical professionals. So remote healing can help in many different circumstances to make someone feel better and in a way promote the medical healing. But again, it always should be combined with professional medical attention. Were Mitchell's personal beliefs in Nordic science, sciences instrumental in his recovery? Yes, it was. He had the fight in him to beat it, so in a way helped himself cure the illness. Will the practice of naturopathic medicine become more widespread in the future? Yes, this will be in combination with more medical, the typical medical science. So making someone more comfortable, making them more aware of what is happening, and helping them in the fight against illness is very important, of course, combined with the traditional medicine. Was Mitchell correct in being 90% sure that many of the thousands of UFOs recorded since the 1940s belong to visitors from other planets? Yes, there is some truth to that, yes. Did Mitchell meet with officials from three countries who claim to have, who have, to have had personal encounters with extraterrestrials? Again, there is some truth to that. Had the officials from three countries experienced personal encounters with extraterrestrials before meeting with Mitchell? Yes. Was Mitchell correct in that governments have been covering up visitations and the existence of extraterrestrials? There has been a lot of keeping things on a need-to-know basis, yes. Have, as Mitchell has alleged, extraterrestrials provided technological secrets to a government or governments? Some might, but again, with the extraterrestrials, they are not to interfere with the timeline, so they cannot just hand over blueprints or hand over technology. But again, that is speaking for most of them. Were presidents of the United States not briefed on extraterrestrials after John F. Kennedy was in office? Again, it is very difficult to say what information has been shared and not shared, but there has been some knowledge, yes, but also some people who have been kept in the dark. Did John F. Kennedy inquire about UFOs addressing a memo to a government agency only days before his assassination? Yes, he did. Was Mitchell talking for increasing numbers uh, for an increasing number of people over the years when he stated, we all know that UFOs are real, now the question is where they come from? Yes, many people believe in UFOs and extraterrestrials. And again, it comes into question that are humans only life forms, intelligent life forms that are in the universe. So to many, it seems very odd that humans and the Earth would be the only place for life. Was Mitchell correct in stating that extraterrestrials rather than diplomacy prevented the Cold War from descending into the Third World War? They had some assistance, yes. Again, there is a timeline to be followed and different powers come into play where there is a significant change on the earth. Are we currently on a path to a third world war? 
That is a difficult question since the timeline is not fully in place for everything. Some decisions would make it where the war would occur while others wouldn't. So again, it would be making the right decisions possible and being the best person possible and making sure every decision is really thought about and not lead to a path of war. What can we do as individuals, for example, through meditation to prevent a third world war? Basically, positive energy and being very mindful of not only yourself, but also the people around you, the environment around you, and even trying to understand other beliefs. So instead of automatically judging someone else, being mindful of this possible judgment and trying to see both sides, even when it's difficult. Are extraterrestrials interested in mankind's military capabilities? They are interested in what the military might do with those, yes. But again, they are not trying to steal them or study them or anything like that. Again, it goes back to the timeline. Have extraterrestrials been attempting to keep mankind from going to war and help create a, help create peace on Earth? Yes, some of them. Did Mitchell, with well-known personality Yuri Geller, try to set up a controlled experiment by attempting to teleport a camera that was left on the moon? Yes. Rather than retrieving the camera, did he teleport two lost type-ins with a piece of one showing up in Geller's mouth with a remainder of that one and the other one showing up in the laboratory? That is what he believed, yes. What actually happened? Basically, nothing was actually teleported, so the teleportation was not true. It just, in that moment, the mind kind of went blank to another place, so the people were not aware of their actions. So they were the ones moving the objects instead of it being teleported from the moon. What has been the impact of Edgar Mitchell's life, especially his work in parapsychology? Basically, it opens up the minds of some of the people where they can read his work and they can really think about these harder concepts. In addition to that, it makes it so that overall there's this more positive way about thinking about the unknown. So again, this goes back to instead of being judgmental or assuming or almost being harsh to other people for their beliefs, it becomes this acceptance. So if more and more people could just look into different topics, even though they might not always have the answer to believe in or believe with or agree with, where the human mind is always so busy with a very, you could say, normal nine to five job, thinking about family, friends, etc., but there are also these philosophy concepts that people used to think about a lot more, but today they don't seem as important to many people. That was the last answer. Is the science of parapsychology too good to be true? That depends on what you are prepared to believe. And as always, thank you so much to the listeners. You can reach us on our Facebook page or Instagram page at Too Good To Be True with the first two spelled T-W-O. And we look forward to next week's show. If you are looking for a safe, zero-calorie, natural option to the harmful artificial sweeteners on the market today, Just Like Sugar is what you're looking for. Just Like Sugar is a wonderful natural alternative for those health-conscious people who choose a calorie-restricted diet with a great, pure, sweet flavor that tastes just like sugar. Just Like Sugar is a great natural option for people suffering from diabetes and may be useful in restricted diet programs where standard sugars are not allowed and does not cause a laxative effect of some other sweeteners. Just Like Sugar comprises a perfect blend of chicory root fiber, natural calcium, natural vitamin C, and Just Like Sugar's sweetness comes from the natural flavors from the peel of the orange. Just Like Sugar is a natural alternative to harmful artificial sweeteners and will change the way that you believe all natural sweetener products taste. Just Like Sugar is available at your local Whole Foods markets, Wild Oats markets, Henry's, Sun Harvest, and many other fine natural food stores in the U.S., Canada, and worldwide. They are here, and they've been here for thousands of years, making their presence known in the shadows. They might be seen by a lonely motorist on a deserted road late at night, or by a frightened and confused husband in the bedroom he is sharing with his wife. But who are they? What do they want? Why are they here? Perhaps most concerning, has the government been aware of their presence all along? 
The new book by Ellie Marzulli, UFO Disclosure, The 70-Year Cover-Up Exposed, delves into the world of UFOs. Can full disclosure be soon? Order now and receive a free hour and 37-minute DVD on the UFO phenomenon, UFOs Are Real. Get both the book and the DVD, a $40 value, for only $19.99. To order your book and DVD today, go to lamarzuli.net. That's L-A-M-A-R-Z-U-L-L-I dot net. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Memorable dynamic presentations are a not-so-secret weapon in the business world. Do you have a powerful message that must be shared, but you haven't found a way to deliver that message? Do you want to be known as a top public speaker who gets amazing results? Are you ready to create and deliver your powerful message? Thomas Hyde can help you create and deliver your speech to get the results you desire. Visit IconQuality.com. Did you expect your business to flourish, but instead it plateaued or didn't get off the ground yet? Would you like to achieve massive goals and discover new sources of income within your business? When you're ready to experience that type of success with fast results, Cindy Hendricks is the business coach for you. Her work with entrepreneurs and business owners has been life-changing. To get you and your business where you want to be, go to imaginemoresuccess.com. Has the fear of public speaking stalled your business or personal life? What would you give to develop and maintain supreme confidence? Have an invaluable private program to always perform at your best. Imagine how you would feel. You can have all that and so much more today with Thomas Hyde's life-changing course called Number One Fear Unleashed. Visit NumberOneFear.com and be liberated from your fear of public speaking. too good to be true and before the break we were just about to get into the questions and psychic insight about Edgar Mitchell and parapsychology dad can you please ask the first question did Edgar Mitchell have it on his life path to become a famous astronaut yes is the definition of parapsychology accurate as being a study of mental abilities that conflict with the known laws of nature and science yes that's correct Is that conflict due to the laws of nature and science not being currently sufficiently expansive? Yes, there is still a lot of unknowns and it's difficult to try to include the gray area for those unknowns. In Mitchell's doctorate dissertation from 1964 to design a mission to Mars, sorry, I'll start again. Is Mitchell's doctorate doctorate dissertation from 1964 to design a mission to Mars of use today? with a Mars landing by astronauts being planned? It's being thought about, yes, not to the point of being completely planned, but the thought is there, yes. A mission to Mars is being talked about, but would Mitchell's doctor be pertinent today so many years after? Yes, some of the information is. For Apollo 13's amazing return against all the odds, was mankind helped by extraterrestrials or spiritual beings? You could say the spirit world did help, yes, where the timeline of events had to unfold, where it wasn't the people's time to go. How vital was the mission operations team, including Edgar Mitchell, in helping Apollo 13's successful return? Very important. They wouldn't have done it without that team. 
when Mitchell was piloting Apollo 14's lunar module to the surface of the moon, why did he encounter two failures, one after the next? Just bad luck, unfortunately. So just very bad luck. What were the natures of those failures? They were more mechanical in nature. So one was more mechanical, another one was more mechanical, but related to human error as well. Did he have to manually punch in 80 lines of code into an onboard computer to overcome the failures? Yes. On the journey back to Earth, did seeing a planet in the distance give Mitchell a glimpse of a deeper hidden nature? In a way, yes. Can you say more about that? He just kind of had a very spiritual moment with himself, realizing there's more than just the mission he was on, that there is more to learn and more to explore. Did looking at Earth and space raise the questions, who are we, how do we get here, and where is all this going? Yes, which many people go through in their lifetime. So almost everyone hits a point where they wonder these questions. I remember George Harrison, George Harrison mentioning something like that. Was that a similar situation? Yes, 100%. Why would Mitchell, with a strong scientific background, think that science is, un is unable to answer what might be called philosophical questions? That is the tricky part, where there are these gaps between subjects. So instead of having the subjects overlap in information, they are put into little boxes, where science is one box, philosophy is another box. However, even ancient humans had the idea where these boxes do overlap, where ideas can be in more than just one box. Is humankind's understanding of cosmology archaic and flawed, or is it just not sufficiently developed? Not sufficiently developed, so the problem is that the human mind only comes up with so many concepts. So at a point, there is a wall that is reached where technology can come up with greater concepts, meaning the technology needs to be pushed. Why was Mitchell open to trying an ESP experiment during the Apollo 14 mission before he had been affected by senior from space? Just this more open-mindedness, so being able to try new things in a way. Was this the first ESP experiment conducted from space? Yes. Was Mitchell correct in concluding that telepathy, sorry, was Mitchell correct in concluding that in telepathy, space doesn't matter? That could be said, yes. What did Mitchell mean in the 2001 time frame when he said about ESP that we have the science now to show exactly how it works. It has nothing to do with space and time. It is what we call non-local communication. Basically, that statement was explaining that it is not related to one concept or the next. However, it is just embedded into humans. So in his thought process, telepathy, telepathy is something old people possess. It is just being able to train your mind to be open to the concept. Why do the Apollo 14 ESP experiment seem to have been largely forgotten about? It was not as big as other news at the time. So when experiments like these take place, one, there's usually something else going on that takes the news headlines. And number two, it is a controversial subject. So it is not something like a new discovery of an animal, such as where there is scientific facts. Instead, it is this new experiment that some people want to forget forget it actually exists. Was Mitchell far ahead of the rest of us when he formed his company that promoted ecologically pure products and services designed to alleviate planetary problems? Yes and no. Some other people were on the same level as him. However, he was really seeing the overall impact on the Earth. So in a way, yes, he was ahead of his time. But he was with the other people that were forefronting the process. What would it take for ecologically pure products and services designed to alleviate planetary problems becoming widely used? Basically money. So these products aren't always the cheapest and there are always ways to make things cheaper. So money is a big factor where companies want to make money and consumers want to spend as little money as possible. And there is also the factor where a lot of people in their minds believe the problem isn't so big. So they believe that this waste in affecting the environment isn't actually as big or as big of a problem. They believe that people are blowing it out of proportion and it isn't something that the earth can't handle. 
Why is stated by Mitchell when setting up the Institute of Noetic Sciences or Ions, have science and religion lived on opposite sides of the street for hundreds of years? Basically, it's in science and religion, again, are in their own boxes. So they are in these separate boxes where if someone has a religious or spiritual concept, it doesn't overlap with science. So there's this overall understanding that science is the facts and religion is the possibilities. With the Institute of Noetic Sciences researching areas that are of vital interest to mankind, including the nature of reality, why isn't the organization better known? Basically, again, some people don't even want to think of concepts such as those. So many people are going through their daily lives, not questioning anything, not really wanting to know the answers to these more far-fetched questions. And in addition to the right, that, right now, the focus is on different concepts. So reality, for example, is not in the public eye as much as it should be. So overall, it's about what gets media attention and what doesn't. What prompted author Dan Brown to include a character that is a Nordic scientist in the 2009 novel, The Lost Symbol? Basically, the knowledge. So their studies are leading to some interesting points, and their work is going in a more positive direction now. So it's important to recognize them and recognize even other people and organizations that are at least attempting to answer these unknown questions. In the Science of the Lost Symbol, is the Science of the Lost Symbol website correct in stating that noetic sciences explore the inner cosmos of the mind, consciousness, soul, spirit, and how it relates to the outer cosmos of the physical world? Yes, that's correct. Why does conventional science routinely dismiss the study of mind-body interaction, consciousness, the paranormal alternative, alternative and complementary healing, the human body field and other aspects of nature and human biology? Unfortunately, when you think about a certain career path, usually it attracts a certain type of personality. So most scientists as a whole, not seeing every person, but just a general consensus, think in black or white terms. Something either has a result or doesn't have a result, and this result is always recordable in some way. So that is the scientific process as a whole, where everything is black or white. You have this problem you are going to solve, so that it's going to turn into either proving your hypotheses or not proving your hypotheses, just basic science concepts. The problem is the paranormal and these other concepts you mentioned are more in the gray area, so there is not one solid answer every single time, so it does not line up in every single experiment. So basically the problem is scientists are up against a lot of experiments with too many variables at play where the answer is not going to be in the black area or the white area, but it's going to be in the gray area. That is why it's important for any different occupation, not just scientists, to have all different types of minds. So to have all different personalities, have these other people, and the people who live in the gray area have the responsibility to set up their own experiments, and the results are not always conclusive. Was Mitchell speaking for many of us, or just a few of us, when he stated toward the end of his life that we're trying to, to put two faces of reality the existence face and the intelligence or conscious face into the same understanding. In a way that is speaking for everyone, since again, this explains the concept of either it's black or it's white. So in a way, yes, there are two faces. However, again, it needs to be studied where it is not just these little boxes, but can also be both and can be many other things. I don't think we got time for another question before the break. Maybe you should mention our social media outlets. Yes, you can reach us at Too Good To Be True with the first two spelled T-W-O on Facebook or 2GTBT on Instagram. And we'll continue after the short break and you're listening to Too Good To Be True with Justina Marsh and Pete Marsh on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net.
Thank you.